Welcome to our tip 56. And today what I'm going to be talking about is ggplot, how to make dual y axis charts. And this is something that, I, that is very commonly done in Excel. And I want to show you how to do it in R. So you can see here, there's a dual y axis. That's where there, we have something like this line plot paired with a column plot or another line plot and they have different scales. So there's the value proportion, which is a percentage. And then there's something that might be numeric uh, where you want to have a different scale and you want to have them overlap. So you can see differences, things like how S the SUV category, while well, it has a lot of proportion of vehicle sales, uh, the highway mile per gallon is lower for those and for pickups versus other classes. I'm going to show you how to make it in this lesson. All right, to get started, what I need you to do is you need to sign up for the weekly art tips. That's going to give you access to all of the code that I show you here. So what you're going to do is you're going to go here, sign up for the art tips newsletter. And what you're going to do is going to do a Git pool, and that's going to give you access to all of this code in here. I'm going to be working out of 056 dual Y axis charting. Okay. You're going to get this R file. You're going to open it up. Make sure you have the outline open so you can follow along with me. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to load some libraries. The first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to load the tidyverse and tidyquant. So tidyverse is going to be where we get our core R packages. And then the tidyquant library is one of my R packages that I've specifically built. And it's great because it comes with some themes to make this visualization look very nice. And we'll see why in a few minutes, we're going to want to use tidyquant. All right, next thing, collect the data. We're going to be using the MPG data set. It's just a data set that comes with 234 rows. These are each different vehicles and it has the manufacturer, the model, the displacement, the year it was built, the number of cylinders, the transmission type, drivetrain and city and highway fuel economy, uh, the, the fuel type and the class of the vehicle. Next thing, we're going to do some aggregation. So we need to get our data ready to do this visualization. Um, this is a little dplyr data wrangling. We're going to start with the MPG data set. I'm going to remove the year. So that's going to drop the year column. I'm going to group by the class column and we're going to summarize then where is numeric. We're going to apply the median function and we're also going to create a count column. So that's what this is going to do. So when I group by class and then summarize across the uh, numeric columns and do a count, we're applying the median function to each of these columns. So we're going to get displacement median, cylinder median, city median, highway median, and then we're going to get the count because I add this count in right here. Okay. And that's going to total, and that's going to be used to get our proportions. Okay. Once we do that, we're just going to ungroup and make sure there's no leftover groups. And then I'm going to create some new columns called proportion, which is going to be the count divided by the sum of the count. Uh, I'm going to create a column called all groups, and I'm, I'm going to uh, reorder the class here. I'm going to do a factor reorder um, based on the proportion. Okay. So when I do that, I now have the proportion. So this is going to be the percentages for the plots. Um, the highway, the median highway fuel economy is going to come from this column here and we have everything we need in order to create this plot. So I'm going to save that as MPG summarized. The problem is, so when I make this plot here and I'm going to start with a GG plot and just create um, a, uh, just a kind of a canvas here with the X column being the class. So that's this column here. Um, and it's got two seater, you know, minivan, SUV, etc. Then if I add a geom call, which is for my proportion and then a geom label, this looks great so far, but then as soon as I want to add that second um, variable, say like highway median. So keep in mind, this is a percentage. So when I do uh, the geom line for highway median, I get something like this because these proportions are measured on a completely different scale, right? So you've got 0 0.214. Um, the highest one looks like 0 0.265. And then you've got a scale of 25, 23, 17, etc. So it really messes up the plot. Um, and then when you go to add the geom point to it, it just further, you know, makes it messy. Okay. So this is the problem. We want to fix this and I'm going to show you how um, I'm going to give you a function. And I'm not, we don't need to know all of the mechanics of this function, but what we need to do is this is going to help us transform this line to be on the same scale as this, uh, as the primary column. So this is going to be our secondary axis. We're going to use for this this um, data and our primary is going to be this. 
So this transformer is gonna take a primary column, which is going to be our uh, proportion column, and then our secondary column, which is going to be our highway median. Um, I'll explain what include Y0 um, does in a second. So I'm just gonna run this function. And when I do that, it runs all of this code from line 57 all the way down here to 98, okay? All right, so let's apply this function now. So if I take my MPG summarized data, so this is the summarized, and I apply this transformer dual Y axis, and I'm gonna save it as transformer. So when I do this, what this does is it takes my prop column, which again is the primary column, and then the highway median, that's gonna be this data up here. And I'm gonna select include Y zero equals true. I'll show you what that does in a second. Um, so let's see what the transformer does. So it returns a scaling function, an inverter function, and a params function, okay? Or a params data set. Um, what's really important though is these scalars and inverters. So let's just take a look at this highway. So if I take a look at uh, the highway median column, so this is the data that comes out right here, this 25, 27, 27, uh, all the way down to 17.5. That's what this vector of information is, just the median highway fuel economy. If I do the inverse function, so let me do the inverter first. What it does is it inverts it to the same scale as the proportion. So you can see here, prop goes up to say like 26.5% is the biggest one. So the biggest one here, here is going to be uh, the third one, which is 27. Um, and we can see it gets inverted to 0.26. So it's gonna be on the same scale. And then um, if I want to uh, if I want to re reverse the inverter, so I scale it back to the original scale, uh, I can get the original scale. So that's what these two functions do that come from this transformer object that we've just created, okay? All right, with that in hand, we now have the tools necessary to do some plotting and, and do this um, dual y-axis. So first we're gonna create the primary y-axis. And that's just going to be doing what we did originally. So I'm going to create this um, and mind you the colors. We'll fix these here in a second. These are just some of the default colors for ggplot. So I'm going to save this as G1. And this is nothing more than what we did originally. We just create the canvas here. We create a, we add a column um, for bar plots using the prop column. And uh, we add a geom label for to add the percentages above. Okay. So once we do that, if I do control and enter, I'm gonna save that as G1. Now is where the magic happens. So we're gonna take our G1, which is this plot here, and we're going to do our geom line. And here in the Y, I'm gonna, instead of just having highway median, I'm gonna put this transformer invert function around highway median. Um, same thing for geom point. And if I do this, we'll see what happens. I'll just run the geom line first. And you can see it, it kind of scales it and puts it right here at the top of the plot. So it never goes above this 26.5, okay? Um, same thing with the points because we have that inverter function being applied to the points. And then now when we, and we can do the geom label, um, we can do the same thing. So if I put a little label above these, the 26 mile per gallon, the number of miles per gallon, again, we'll fix the colors here in a second. All right. And then what we want to do though, is we want to add the dual Y axis. So here's where the, what we do, we use a scale Y continuous function. And these, the labels and name affect, actually affect this primary column. But then there's this thing called sec dot axis. And we can use this function sec underscore axis and apply the transformer scale function. So this is, we were up until now we were using the inverter function, but now we're going to use the scale function with just dot here in the middle. Don't get too confused by this, the way this looks, just kind of go with it because it's going to be this way um, anytime you, you, uh, you use it. So now um, the, the process is going to be such that we're adding this dual axis, highway MPG. The name comes from right here. We've now scaled it though to match the same scale as the percentages. So we're going from zero to 30 and we see 0% to 30%. Okay, cool, pretty cool. All right, next we just need to fix the theme. That's what this code does here. I'm not gonna go into too much what I'm doing, but it's gonna clean up the, the theme a lot. So now it looks much better. And we've got, we got rid of things like the legend that was over here on the side, it's not really needed. 
Um, we've made now this highway MPG and this numbering scheme all the same color as, as this line. So the user immediately sees that this red line relates to this dual axis, okay? And now we have a pretty professional looking plot. So congrats. Um, the last thing I wanted to do real quick, I wanna show you this, um, this when I do include zero false. So you see how we have zero down here? You, you may want this scaled so it takes up the full, um, the, the full screen. So I'm just gonna do false here and I'll show you what that does. Um, I'll just rerun all of this code. So this G2 now has the scale going down the whole way to the bottom here, okay? And then um, when we look at G3, uh, now the plot is updated so that way 17 miles per gallon is hitting the bottom of the plot right now, okay? So it's just a user preference if you want that to, if you want zero to be included in the secondary axis, just put this up here as true and it'll change it right back. All right, so for those of you who watch this and are excited about using R for business analysis and using R for data science and becoming a business scientist, which is somebody who knows business and can use data science skills to help their company, then I have an amazing opportunity for you. I have a free R masterclass that teaches the 10 secrets to becoming a data scientist. This is the 10 secrets that really helped me in my career, learning things like Shiny uh, for, for business automations, learning things like machine learning and which packages are important to learn to help speed up your process. So. The problem that this helps solve is it took me five years to learn data science. I don't want that it to take you that long for you. So I'm giving you guys access to a free R masterclass and it's going to teach you the 10 secrets to becoming a data scientist and earning a six figure career. So here's the, the uh, web link. Um, I'll put a link in the video notes. So check that out. And I look forward to helping you on your data science career. All right. See ya.